Hey guys, this is Thad with survivalgardener.com and I wanted to talk about some of the top hard lessons I've learned with an aquaponic system uh, here in Costa Rica. And we're running one a little different than a lot of the ones you'll see, we're running them out outdoors. So they're exposed to bugs, uh, more wind, things like that. Uh, a little more of the elements. We have some of it blocked off from wind, but I want to talk about just some of the hard lessons that we've learned and things I wish I would have known when we first started building. Um, number one, protect your ponds, keep debris out of them. If you're gonna have an outside system, be sure they're protected. And so we, we've actually blocked our ponds from the wind, but the debris is even worse than poop uh, in your, like too much sediment in your system because uh, plant debris clogs up your beds. So you'll end up with all this decomposing plant debris in your beds and it just clogs them up and makes it tough. So uh, solve that problem right there. Um, you can either cover your tanks or give some, some block for it. Um, number two, ensure that all the rocks on your bed are basically dry. They're not wet all the time. Um, if you, especially if you have an outdoor system, if your rocks are wet all the time, they're going to start growing moss and things like that. You're going to have negative effects on your pH. Uh, also, uh, on top of those rocks, oh, step here. On top of those rocks, uh, if you if you allow plant matter to decompose on top of your rocks or whatever your media may be, you're going to have uh, you're going to get things like ants. And you're also going to have more decomposing plant matter, which is going to have uh, negative effects on your pH as well. At least it has in my experience. So we cleaned up those two things and it drastically helped. Another thing, um, we have a pretty big system. We have a tank over here and a tank over there. And then we have five grow beds. Uh, you can see a few of them behind me. Uh, one is a um, four or flood drain with volcanic rock. And one is a floating bed with some cat, little baby catfish living in them and we raise water hyacinth for a duck in it. And <clears throat> we chugged along with a pump that wasn't enough water flow and you got to have good water flow. Um, don't, don't short yourself on a pump, go ahead and get a good one. I suggest the Jabao DC pumps off Amazon. I'm able to run this entire system, two tanks of fish and uh, five pretty good sized grow beds for uh, about 100, 110 watts. And that's what, uh, that's what I, I run it at 90%. I think it's max 130 watts. So uh, get a good get a good pump. I suggest DC DC pumps. They're a little more efficient. And uh, the Jabal pumps off Amazon have ran for like I've had I've had I had one for two years. Just too small for what I was trying to do. And we upgraded and way happier. In fact, now I have too much water to where I tone it down or I, I give more. I use it to create more oxygen in the water in my floating grill bed. So. Pretty cool. Uh, the other thing is, is if you're gonna have a big system, uh, make a start off with a way to deal with sediment. Uh, some people tell you, oh, just pump it all in the grow beds. In my experience, it's better to have an intermediary. Like uh, you can see one right over here. Uh, these are things I built. Uh, they are after my fish tanks. I have an entire gravity system, so everything it gets pumped up and, and drains back down to the sump. So those are in between the fish tank and the grow beds. So um, basically what it causes is water to swirl around a bit. It, the uh, exits have, um, they pull water from the top and the poop. Most of it goes towards the bottom. And then what I did was we have a huge taro bed growing out back there. I had exits so I can clean out the, uh, the sediment filters, which is basically just a bunch of fish poo. Uh, but we, we, we dump it into a, a garden down there. and. So far, it's been working pretty good. It's been, been like that for about a year now. Um, check your nitrates, check your ammonia, check your nitrites. Be sure if your nitrites are high, you can kill your fish for sure. If you, um, now if your pH is high, something's wrong. If your pH is too low, something, something's up. So we have super calcified water. So one of the things we have to do is we're pulling out of a well, got a lot of calcium. So what we do is, to keep our pH uh, seven or lower, what we do is we have to feed our fish. Uh, be sure we're feeding them regularly. And I mean, obviously you should be feeding your fish regularly, but uh, it's especially important if, if you have if high pH. Uh, so the more poo in that water, the more acid. Uh, so uh, feeding them is, is, is doubly important because not only do the plants need nutrients, they need the ability to uptake nutrients. And a lot of plants, if you got a pH over seven, they simply can't take up a majority of the nutrients they need to, especially things like tomatoes and stuff like that. 
I can grow celery and sea salt spinach and all kinds of other stuff all day long, but if my pH isn't right, uh, tomatoes fail and a lot of other things, especially in the heat, it's, uh, it's tough. So tomatoes and peppers are definitely relying on a solid pH. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Um, I just wanted to go over some of the, some of the things I've, I've had to deal with here in Costa Rica. So the tropics. Thank you.